OnePlus had been killing it with its portfolio in 2024. First, there was the OnePlus 12 and the OnePlus 12R, then the Nord CE4, all of which were the best in their respective price segments. But then, out of nowhere, OnePlus launched this phone, the Nord CE4 Lite, for some 20,000 Indian rupees, featuring the three-year-old Snapdragon 695 chipset. Yes, the very same chipset that they featured on the Nord CE3 Lite and the Nord CE2 Lite before that. And needless to say, the internet hates this phone. Because if you look at the competition, it's a little difficult for OnePlus to justify the processor. We have the iQOO Z9 with a much more powerful Diamond City 7200 chip. And then there's the POCO X6, which comes with the Snapdragon 7S Gen 2. And even OnePlus's Nord 3 is currently available for a similar price that has a much, much better performance. So where does it leave the Nord C4 Lite then? Uh, well, because I like to believe that I am a positive person, let's talk about the good things first. And this time you get a quality AMOLED display here with a 120Hz refresh rate that is optimized quite well. Previously, the Nord CE3 Lite came with an IPS LCD display that looked quite flat, but now we get a vibrant, bright panel with 2100 nits of peak brightness. Now, you have to know that the Snapdragon 695 does not support HDR video playback, uh, so having a peak of 2100 nits of brightness almost seems like a waste watching SDR contents. But the good thing is that it does go up to 1200 nits in the auto mode, so using this phone under direct sunlight isn't much of a struggle. Plus, there is this AquaTouch feature which is similar to what there is on the OnePlus 12 and the 12R. And as you can see, the bezels on it are not so pronounced. So this phone is actually not a bad option as a budget multimedia device. As a matter of fact, its stereo speakers are quite loud and balanced for the price. And because this is an OLED screen, you will find an in-display fingerprint sensor here. It's uh, fast and pretty accurate, I have to say, but I wish it was placed a little higher than it is. I also have to give it to OnePlus. The battery life on this thing is really, really impressive. It's 5,500 mAh battery coupled with a low-powered Snapdragon 695 chip means the battery life here just goes on and on. I uh, took a few days off recently and I watched YouTube and scrolled through Instagram Reels all day. And with that sort of usage, look at the number of hours this phone ran. It's outstanding. Although I am a little ashamed looking at my social media usage hours. Anyway, charging this phone is not a pain either. With the 80 watt charger that you get inside the box, you can charge this phone from 0 to 100% in less than an hour. Anyway, OnePlus seems to have worked on the design side of things too. You get a really modern looking boxy form factor here and some really nice color options. The one I have is this flashy blue color, which I am not that huge a fan of, but the other two options look quite nice. And even though this phone has a huge battery inside, it's good to see that OnePlus has managed to make it so thin and noticeably lighter. Of course, this is a budget phone, so you get a plastic build, but OnePlus has included extra features like IP54 rating for basic splash and dust protection. But you have to know that there is no Gorilla Glass protection on the front, so it's better to use a good screen protector after this pre-applied one wears off. I am also happy to see that OnePlus has not missed out on a headphone jack here, so that's great too. Okay, so the camera is another area where this phone gets a nice upgrade. OnePlus has ditched the 108 megapixel Samsung sensor on the CE4 Lite in favor of a new 50 megapixel Sony LTY 600 sensor instead. And in my test, I found the Sony sensor doing a pretty good job indeed. For a budget phone, I am actually impressed with the camera quality on this phone. Of course, OnePlus has not left their contrasty optimization behind here, but the photos have nice details, so I will not complain. Although if you're someone who likes natural toned down colors, you might not like the level of saturation in the pictures from the Nord CE4 Lite. And uh, sometimes the dynamic range might take a hit too, but most times the pictures here are good. During nighttime too, the images are reasonably good, although I would suggest turning on night mode because you will get much better noise control that way. And the sharpness is also better versus with the normal mode. The Nord CE4 Lite clicks surprisingly good portraits too. There is a 2x mode for portraits, which maintains better subject focus. Uh, well, I will admit that the edge detection is only so-so, but the vibrant colors and nice skin tone means that you can take some good-looking portraits for social media from this phone. 
the selfies from this phone are a little processed, but then again, not bad for casually sharing some on Instagram. The videography department has been cursed by the Snapdragon 695 yet again because it does not support 4K recording and it does not have the option to record in 60fps as well. So all you're left with is 1080p 30fps. To be fair, the 1080p recordings are smooth enough, but again, a 4K option would have been much nicer. Selfie videos from this phone are bad though. There is no stabilization and exposure control is a hit or a miss. So overall, it's fair to say that the videography side of things is just average on the North C4 Lite. But the overall photography side is actually solid here. Last year's North C3 Lite cameras were just average. So it's nice to see OnePlus doing a better job this time. Okay, moving on, OnePlus is one of the companies that provides a comparatively cleaner software experience too with no ads and app recommendations. Although for some reason, OnePlus did feel the need to add a few bloatware apps this time around. All these apps, by the way, can be uninstalled without breaking a sweat, but it's kind of surprising to see OnePlus adding bloatware. Besides that, OnePlus has made a few other changes too, like they have removed a few animations in the UI, like when you open an app, there is no animation anymore. I am not necessarily complaining about this, but I'm just letting you guys know. By the way, OnePlus has promised a total of two years of Android and three years of security patches on this phone, which is good enough for a phone in the 20,000 price bracket. And there is also the fact that the Snapdragon 695 might not be able to handle more updates than that. So that makes sense. Now talking more about the Snapdragon 695, even in 2024, for regular general usage, this chip handles things well with no lags or stutters. But since apps have become more demanding now, I did notice it to be slightly slower in opening an app or multitasking between heavy apps as compared to something like the iQOO Z9 or the CMF Phone 1, which I have started using. Likewise, because of the weaker GPU, you will only be able to play low to mid-tire games here and nothing more. Like uh, PUBG, for instance, runs at around 40 FPS, which is very basic. And even with games like Call of Duty and Mobile Legends, you can only get decent FPS and nothing more. I also tried playing Genshin Impact and as expected, the gameplay was totally with miserable graphics. The only good thing about the Snapdragon 695 though is that it does not heat up or get warm even when I was using it outdoors on a sunny day with mobile data turned on. So considering its performance levels, is the internet right to hate the Nord CE4 Lite? Uh, well, yes, OnePlus should have used a better and newer chipset here for sure. But for the price, this phone does offer 90% of the good things as well. Like you're getting one of the best displays in this price range, a good speaker, amazing battery life, good photography prowess, and more importantly, a reliable software experience. So I think the Nord CE4 Lite would be a good buy for someone whose performance needs are not very extensive, like maybe our parents or someone who is into a lot of media consumption and clicking photos rather than playing high-end games. Also, since this phone has one of the best battery lives in this price range, it can also be a decent option for people who travel a lot or are constantly out in the field like delivery people, uh, sales executives, etc. But then again, I might be all wrong. So do let me know in the comments what you think about the Nord CE4 Lite. I really, really want to know what you guys think. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thank you so much for watching.